This is the most comprehensive and potentially overly obsessive list of things that your plants hate and wish you'd just stop doing. Don't believe your plants hate you? Put a night cam on them and watch as they all talk about you behind your back. I did this and I saw things get pretty heated. There was monsteras fighting with aglionemas and all sorts. It got pretty messy. I listened to what they were arguing about and changed my ways. Now we're all living in harmony. I think. The Monstera won, by the way. He's the king of this particular jungle. Mrs. Sheffield tends to do this for her outdoor potted plants no matter how many times I tell her not to and it drives me bonkers. She adds a fine layer of soil in the pot, pops her bulbs in and tops up with another fine layer of soil. I mean, what are you doing? Fill the whole pot with soil to give them half a chance. I hope she's not watching this. Roots need soil to grow in so it doesn't pay to be so stingy. Just get your pot filled up with soil so that the crown sits proudly at the top. The roots need it. Water one area of the root ball at a time and you'll have a real mutiny on your hands. I've had plants down tools and refused to work over this and it's one of the reasons I switched to bottom watering. But I know lots of you still refuse to make the switch despite my protestations, so just make sure you properly waterboard your little green friends until they can't take it anymore. You might think this is torture, but trust me, they love it. I mean, you can literally do this too if you have a hydrophobic plant on your hands. Water like a little fairy and some roots won't get their weekly drink. Not happy. Try not to let your plants get too hairy. I don't mean on the legs. No, nope, I'm talking about top growth. Old foliage needs to be cut off just like the split ends of your hair does. At least you have hair, if you do. If you don't, then I relate. And don't be shy. If you don't like the look of something, cut it off. It grows back, unlike this particular top growth. Look what Sheffield Jr. did to my brand new Pothos planter. Ripped holes in the leaves. Never mind, I said to him, I'll just need to prune it off. I was honestly that calm. Seriously though, his intervention would probably make this a bushier plant with two new stems growing wherever I make the cuts. It was all his plan, no doubt. He's already learning, you see. Dead leaves and the dirty ground when I know you're not around. That's what your green friend is thinking if you're not paying attention and cleaning up the soil line from time to time. They're like, why are you still not picking up this trash from my doorstep? And you're probably like, because it's your trash so you pick it up. And he's like, well, I've not got any arms or legs, you fool. And then you're like, oh yeah, well, uh, I'll do it next month. Sound familiar? No, I didn't think so. The point is, clean it up for him. He'll get clammy, moldy feet otherwise, and we don't want that smell in the house. Soil. There's a right way and a wrong way to do soil. The ultimate wrong way is grabbing soil from your garden for your houseplants. No, 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 no. Don't do this. Then there's topsoil or regular soil for your garden plants, which again is a no-no. Mrs. Sheffield brought me some instead of compost a few months ago, despite me explicitly saying it needed to be compost. It didn't start a row in any way whatsoever. Anyway, I decided to try it out and plant my oxalis into it and, uh, well, just look at it. Too dense, too wet, too dry, all at the same time. Compost is great and my usual go-to, but recently I've been wondering if this is the cause of my gnat problem. And when I say wondering, I mean lots of my helpful viewers brought this to my attention. You see, I do listen to what you're saying in the comments. Whenever I get compost out, I seem to get a new influx of gnats in the house. Luckily for me, Cybersoil reached out and said that they sent me a bunch of soil to try out and show me just how good their mix is compared to the compost mix I usually make. And they've actually sponsored this video too. I've already used it to repot a few of my plants because, you know, I'm a good boy that's always repotting plants and I must say it's a very pleasant mix. I'm not just saying that because they're giving me money either, I promise. I've used their Aroid mix to repot my Melanocrysis, I mean, sorry, slip of the tongue, Melanocrysum, which is made up of all the good stuff like coconut core, perlite, worm castings, charcoal and other bits and pieces and it doesn't seem to be a gnat magnet like my usual compost mix. Look, my yellow sticky card is gnat free. 
so far. It's a joy to work with, looks almost good enough to eat. They've got a mix for pretty much every type of plant under the sun on their website, which is great if you're a bit newbie like me when it comes to what soil each plant needs. And my good friend, you can bag yourself a 10% discount on all orders by using the code Sheffield at checkout. Just follow the link in the description and happy shopping. I'm thinking of trying Lekka and Semi Hydro, which they sent me tons of. So if you've got any tips on that, then let me know in the comments. I'll stop short of calling plants xenophobes, but they're really not a fan of outsiders muscling in on their patch trying to call all the shots. I mean, who knows what kind of disease and pest newbies bring in, spreading germs all over the place. Yes, they're germaphobes, I guess. It's weird because once they get to know each other, they seem to get on like a house on fire. It's best to keep new arrivals separate from the rest of the family to stop any fights breaking out and to not allow any unwanted visitors jumping from ship to ship. That can bring the whole ship down to its knees very costly. There are tons of pitfalls and traps you need to avoid when buying plants and bringing them home and I cover them all in my very well received houseplant SOS course that I've put a link to in the description to this video. It's packed full of great information on how not to kill your plant as well as how to keep them happy and healthy of course and the key thing is that it's all in one place in an easily digestible format. Have a look, your plants will love you for it. Your plants are probably looking at you setting up pebble trays with water thinking just what is this fool doing? I don't want to be sat in a cold puddle all day every day. Get me the hell out of here. You see they're just not as bothered about high humidity as you are. Sorry to break it to you. I know it feels great helicoptering over our plants because, you know, it feels like we're actually doing something rather than being so passive, but just doesn't do them any favours, or you for that matter. They'd much rather just be left in peace somewhere bright and warm to get on with their day. So don't waste your time with humidity increasing hacks. Spend it more wisely singing them a song instead. I hear this helps them heaps. I did a root pruning video a couple of months ago and the reaction to it broadly fell into two camps. It was either, well, duh, dummy, bonsai growers have been doing this since the Big Bang, or that's the best thing I've seen since sliced bread, or the Beatles, or One Direction. Talk about extremes, eh? What camp were you in? I was late to the party with root pruning. I owe this one to Jeff at Everything Plants. Hopefully he's watching me plug his channel. If you've not tried it yet, then you're missing out. Not only is it great for a tired plant, it's also great for showing it who's boss. No more Mr. Nice Guy. They don't like moldy toes, and to stop the frostbite from spreading, they just wish you'd get it over and done with and amputate. Plants like it hard. The harder the better pruning that is. Tradescantias and ficus plants in particular. Tradescantias, you know what they do by now. Basically they become a mess. How do we solve this? No, 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 not the bin. Well, you can if you want to. I was actually thinking cut everything off and start again. And here's the proof it works. What's that? You're going for the bin option? I don't blame you to be honest. And ficus plants love to lean and over time their leaves start to sag with age. I know what that's like. Well, Unlike us, they have the luxury of being able to have their limbs cut off to sprout brand new ones. I do this all the time. I've got cut back ficus plants all over my house. Give it a go if yours is looking grumpy. Look, they grow new stems just like you want them to. Plants love light. Where's the best light? Windows. Where's the biggest drafts? Windows. Where do we put radiators to combat this? underneath windows. Where should we not put our plants? On windowsills with radiators underneath. End. A few of my plants have downed tools because I've put them in unglazed terracotta pots. I know, I know, some do great in terracotta, succulents and cacti, yes, I know. Your standard house plants like philodendron, alocasia and pothos on the other hand, not so much. The pots are too porous, you'll be having to water them every half hour. Not literally, don't take that literally. Always use a moisture meter. Use my Amazon store link. <clears throat> if you love the look of terracotta like I do, then glaze them first. It stops your plant dying and stops your wood rotting too. Happy days. It's not a good idea to get all touchy-feely particularly with your plants, they hate it. The main reason is because you're more likely to knock off leaves and branches. 
Oops, why can't I just leave things alone? The other reason is the oils in your fingers transferring to the foliage. All right, all right, that one's a bit of a stretch, but it does apply to succulents. Succulents don't like your fingers all up in their grill, especially ones with farina on the leaves. It's just going to rub off when you fat finger them and make them more prone to rot. You'll see the scars of this in the shops with the coating pretty much all rubbed off by all too eager shoppers. Oh, the humanity. But Richard, how are you supposed to clean them without touching them. For regular plants, you can give them a shower. I like taking them outside and giving them a good hose down. They come out brand new, it's great. For succulents, use a makeup brush if you have one. Don't use a toothbrush, far too bristly. <coughs> Plants are intermittent fasters. They skip breakfast, lunch, and dinner for three weeks and then feast on the fourth week. Fast for longer and they lose weight and become off color, but break the fast early and they get heavy around the belly. How long can I stretch this analogy out for? Look, just feed your plant based on what the bottle or packet says. Nothing more, nothing less. They might look like they want more, but the signs of starvation and opulence are the same. That's yellow leaves, by the way. There is one thing that plants absolutely will hate you for above everything else, even more than giving them milk, is giving them soy. I now know what you're thinking. That's stupidly obvious, Mr. Sheffield. The salt content will destroy and conquer. I thought the same, but the YouTube giant that is Five Minute Crafts had it as a plant hack in one of their videos. So I decided to put it to the test and you can watch the shocking results in this video next. I'll see you there. Subscribe.